Hi folks, Paul here. Welcome. I'm here with my friend Richard. He's a technical product manager for Windows Intune. Uh, today we'd uh, like to take you through the steps you need to do to do the software deployment in Windows Intune. So uh, Richard's going to walk you through the screen step by step and show you how it's done. Uh, Richard, do you want to show us how you do it? Absolutely. Let's go to the computer. Okay. And what we've got here is uh, the Wingtip Toys account that we've created for our demonstration environment. And I've uh, logged in and gone down to our software workspace. Now what we have here is we've got two different levels of software uh, set up. Our detected software, which is all the software that we've discovered from the managed computers in our environment. And then we've got the managed software. So this is where we're going to manage um, application packages we're going to deploy. Okay. So by clicking in here, it takes me to our software environment. and. Uh, this is basically a view into the Azure cloud that we're using behind the scenes to store these packages. Right, and the end user doesn't really need to know about that, but this is all it's just it's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, it's it's all for the administrator here. Perfect. Okay. So I've got two packages that I've created already. Um, this first package is uh, the Java runtime, and the second one is a Skype package that we'll be deploying. But I want to add a, a third one in here. So the process that we go through. Uh, to create a package ready to deploy to the managed computers starts with this button here. When I click this, uh, it kicks off a wizard that's going to run on my machine. So I need to have the package I'm going to deploy accessible from the administrator's machine. Okay. So when I click that, I'll switch out to show you the, the, the wizard. So the first thing it's going to do is download and actually run a, it's a WPF application on the administrator's computer. All right. So. So we've logged in here uh, with its credentials. Uh, yep, so um, now my application's running locally here and it's going to take me through the process that I need to create the package, compress it, encrypt it, and then upload it to the uh, Azure cloud. Okay. So simply clicking next, first option is I've got to point it to the package that I want to deploy. So select browse and um, I have a thumb drive plugged in here with my uh, link applications that I want to deploy. So we'll start with a 32-bit version. Click open. And now you can see uh, the package size is reflected here. So so just I want to just sort of jump in here. If there were more files included in the install, uh, how would that work? Uh, so in this case it's just a single exe, but uh, a good example is uh, Office. So okay. if I created a custom package for, for my Office deployment, I point to setup.exe in the, the folder, but there's a lot of subfolders there, uh, including my custom files. So by selecting this icon here, what we do is we, we tell the, the wizard to take everything in that folder and below it and bundle that as part of the package. So one of the preparation steps would be to put all those folders in the same place as the setup. So Absolutely. Can, okay, and gotcha. do the customization beforehand so that it's um, automated. The, the packages we deploy here have to be able to support silent installation because we're installing it. We don't even need the users to be logged on. As long as the machine's connected to the internet, we can detect and manage the, the download and installation process okay. um, using our agents. So uh, you'll need to do all those customizations and tests beforehand to make sure that it can happen seamlessly without the need for user interaction. Got it. So in this case, it's a single exe. We, we don't need to include other folders. So here we've got some freeform text that we can just put in whatever we like. So it's a, it's a Microsoft package that we're deploying. Um, it's the link setup. Um, it's x32. Um, whatever descriptive text we, we want to put in here, it, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So go to next. Now here we can set some requirements around the package. And this is a very important step because what we don't want is the, the clients to be downloading packages that are no use to them. So what I can choose here is, for example, this is only of use to, to a 32-bit architecture. So by selecting that, I make sure that the client does a check before it downloads the package. And if it doesn't qualify, if it doesn't meet these requirements, it won't go through the process of downloading it. So these are the filters that tell the package or the client what, what to install and what not to install. Exactly. So we can also control it by operating system. So in this case, the, the link application, we can say that it runs on Vista or newer, or we could even lock it down to just Windows Vista only machines or Windows XP only, however you want to do it. We'll, we'll do this. So now we come to the detection rules. Now, detection rules are uh, a mechanism that, that we use to make sure that the package hasn't already been installed on the computer. We wouldn't want them to go through a download process and an installation just to basically reinstall the same package. 
So here you may need to add in some of your own detection rules. Uh, so we've given you the ability here to uh, look for a specific file on the file system, um, find out whether or not there's a, an entry uh, code in the MSI database already, or add in a registry key that exists and use that as part of the check. So in this case we just need the default detection rules and that will work fine. So then we come to the command line argument. So this is an important step to make sure that it is automated. And in the case uh, of the, the link package, the command line to put in here is just slash silent, so that when the package installs, um, it happens seamlessly without user interaction. The user, yeah, the user doesn't see it happening. Uh, those switches are are specific to the installation package. Absolutely, right? yes. So yeah. you, you have the choice of whatever uh, switches are available for that particular application. Yeah, we, su we support executables and MSI files. Um, so certainly as far as the MSI packages are concerned, there, there's a range of standard like the quiet switch slash Q okay. um, is standard across all MSIs or, or should be. Um, as far as XEs are concerned, there's, there's a wide Some variation there. A bit yeah. of research, uh, find out who did the application development, uh, you can pretty much create and, silent installs. And if scenarios. you have multiple switches here or command line arguments, it's just slash argument, slash argument, slash argument. Absolutely. Okay. Space in between the two. In fact, you'll need to do that if you're doing some of the Adobe um, packages like Reader or Got it. Um, Flash. Uh, you need to have several arguments for that. Okay, so so uh, click next. And now we come into the process. So while we're running the installer, we want to be able to track the process so it gets reported back to the Windows Intune console. So we look for the return codes from the package to make sure it installed successfully. Uh, by default, we, we just have a zero return that says everything went fine, the, the installation is completed successfully. Uh, 3010 is the default for a successful install, but a restart's required. So we'll capture both of those. If you're using some in-house application that has some custom return codes that allows your application developers to check for some other state returned, you can add those in here and we'll track those and report the information back to. Okay. Uh, this case default works fine. So then we get to our summary screen. Tells and us now everything we set up. We can make sure everything's correct and as soon as we're ready to go, all I have to do is hit the upload button. And away we go. And at this point what actually happens is uh, the package is created and we, we're actually using a, a compressed and encrypted CAB file format. So the, the package takes the files, compresses them and creates a separate CAB file. Now the compression process makes sure that we only car uh, copy across the internet and up to the cloud the smallest package size as possible. Um, and then once the compression has happened locally, that CAB file is then encrypted as well with the certificates for the Intune service. So we make sure not only is the smallest amount of information transferred up to the cloud, but in addition to that, we're also encrypting that data to make sure that there's uh, security of this package is maintained. Okay. And an interesting point to highlight here is um, this encryption and compression is happening on this administrator machine. So we're creating that encrypted package and uploading it over an encrypted path to the cloud and at no point does that package get decrypted until it's actually on the client machine. I see. So the encryption and the compression happens on your local box, yep. gets uploaded securely and then downloaded securely and decrypted and decompressed on the end user machine where the target machine that's going to be That's installed right. on. Okay. All the data stored in the cloud in the, the Azure platform here in the, the back end is encrypted the whole time. It's only decrypted at an installation. Um, I, I've got a question. Um, when it comes to third party updates, uh, is this the same process that you would normally use or, uh, or how does that work? Yeah, so a very similar wizard. There's just one additional step for, for third party updates. And that's basically we're, we're looking for uh, the previous application. So it's the detection rules that we have for an application we're deploying. Um, that's looking for the same application as the package we're deploying. For, for third party updates, what we're asking you for is the previous version. So what does this package update? Okay. So there's one extra step in the wizard. You point it to the executable that it's going to be looking for or some other check like the, uh, the registry entries to say, yep, this qualifies because the previous version's on there and then the package updates, updates that. Okay, and, and you do that from the actual updates workspace, not from the software ex uh, That's right. workspace. So, <coughs> yeah, so, so the, just you, for folks who are wondering you know, where you go, it's to the updates workspace. Yep, yeah, there's an upload option that appears under tasks in updates select that and you get to okay. almost a very similar wizard. experience except that one extra step perfect right 
So the upload, uh, the compression, the encryption's happened, the upload's going on in the background here, and the package is being uh, sent up, and we're finished. And we're done. So now what we've got is we've got two packages going on here. Let me just do a refresh of the screen, and our package is there. Okay, terrific. So ready to be deployed, but you can see the deployment status here is set to no. At the moment, it's in the cloud, ready to go, but obviously I've got to now make it available to my clients. So the step is select it, and now click our deploy button. Would, it, would you have been able to right click on it there and chosen deploy? Uh, I could actually, yeah. that's a very good feature for us to show, <laughs> yeah. We now have right click deploy. There you go. So now I can select any of the groups that I've got. In this example here, we just got all computers or unassigned, which is our default. But if I've got deployment groups set up here for, for my uh, geographies, for my end computers, my laptops, however I've got it configured, I can approve them here. So I select install, click OK. And that's it, the deployment is now ready to go. And in fact, through this UI here, if I scroll across, I can now track the status of those deployments as they occur. So Perfect. as machines check in, I can keep an eye on whether they're in installed state, the installation's happened, and we've got a successful return code. Failed, the installation attempted, and we got a failed return code. Uh, pending uh, in that it's been approved, but they haven't actually gone through the install process yet. Perhaps it has the machine was turned off or hasn't connected. Absolutely, okay. and then uh, not meeting requirements. Maybe it was a 64-bit machine and it didn't qualify for this package, so then it would come up here as it. it didn't meet the requirements. And in a nutshell, that is the new software deployment process. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for folks. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to uh, watch this video, and I uh, hope you enjoy using Windows and Tune. Uh, Richard, thanks very much for being here. Thank you. A pleasure.